So what are some obstacles that that most Christians face when it comes to dating? Huh. So I I I think that sometimes uh, it's a matter of making the connection. I think the obstacle is a lot of people don't know how to make the connection. When I was a singles leader, a lot of the complaints from women were, this feels like a women's meeting. This don't feel like a singles meeting. <laughs> and I'd be like, I don't know what y'all want me to do. I'm trying as best I can, you know? And so a lot of women feel like they go to these events and it's a women's convention. It's not a singles mixer. I've heard that as a um, as a gripe. I've also heard that, um, again, people feel like uh, they don't know how to connect, where to connect, what to say when you connect, where the boundaries are. I think we have uh, in times past not done a great job of helping people to know what their boundaries are and how to enforce those lovingly. And so as a result of it, people are kind of clumsily walking around in the space or people are just treating uh, dating and singleness as a Christian like they would when they weren't saved, which has its own set of problems of its own. So I think learning how to date as a Christian, quite frankly, learning how to date as a Christian, what are my boundaries? I also think it's just a matter of making sure that we understand what the expectation is, what your intention is for dating. Is it about just connect? Are you just trying to hang out with somebody or do you have intentions leading toward courtship? Are you trying to explore marriage? Do you just want to kick it, buddy? Like I think in order for everyone to understand what's happening, we all need to agree on the definition of what's happening and then we can proceed. So it's it's really a nuanced thing, but I, I think if we start with working definitions and then work our way in instead of reverse engineering it, mm -hmm. then we have a lot more success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was thinking about um, even when I was in singles ministry, like you said, the, the whole conversation has changed in, in the way we communicate with people. And, and I think even with dating, like what do people consider even dating as a Christian? What does <laughs> they, you know, like how do you really define it? And then we get to talking about being unequally yoked because we can both say we're believers but maybe you accepted Christ when you were six and you just like, yeah, I'm a Christian. You really don't practice, but you just like, yeah. So yeah, it's easy yeah. to say I'm a Christian too, but what does that look like when it comes to dating? Yeah. Yeah. I, re I remember uh, I was in a seminar once and it was for uh, my uh, company I was working for at the time. And they talked about uh, the definition of communication. And they said, a lot of people assume that communication is when I said it. And he was like, but communication doesn't start until I understand what you said. And I think for us as Christians and as singles, courtship has to first have everyone aligned and agreed and said, okay, this is what the definition is of it is. And then once we know that, then we can have that conversation and, and create those boundaries. But until we know the definition, your definition of it might be one thing. My definition might be another thing. That's why I used to joke. I'd be like, Hey, if, if there anyone right now that if you shot, popped up online in a relationship would be mad at you. Cause they don't know that you're not together. I was like, you know, all things being considered, have the conversation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You said, my God, I don't want to butcher this, but you said communication is understanding what the other person said. Yeah, it doesn't. Because a lot of times we think I said what I said and that's communication. But it's really did I understand what you said? That's good. Because I'm even learning in the process, Nikki, where when I'm talking to my wife, if she says something to me, I'll repeat it back to her. I'll be like, so what you said was. Yeah, that's good. That's repeat healthy. Back to her. Yeah. yeah, that's so healthy because sometimes we hear differently, especially, you know, when we in our feelings, you could have been like, hey, you want, so you say you want to take that trash and you might be like, I said 20 minutes, and, you know, you never know, you know, how things translate. So we hear according to our understanding. So that's, that's really healthy. Let's, let's help out the Christian man. Sure. And what can they do to make themselves more attractive in a dating pool? Um, I heard one of my friends say um, he was at an age where uh, he wants people to come uh, already have done some work so that they can build together as opposed to being needing to all do the work. So um, I think the same thing that men can do for themselves, same thing that women can do singles in general, um, as best you can do the work now so that when you connect, you're not having to unearth and, and rework things that you could have done on your own, you know? So I think it's stuff as simple as counseling is stuff as simple as uh, working on your health and not for the sake of vanity, for the sake of being your most, you know, fit self. That's something that I'm working on. 
Um, I think it's something that's working on your fine. I think there's very practical things that we can all do to make sure that we present our best selves because no one wants to be a burden to anyone when they come and connect. You want to be a benefit and not a, a burden. So making sure that we do the practical things like fitness, like uh, financial fitness, like um, spiritual uh, fitness, make sure your spiritual disciplines are in place. It is so much harder to create a spiritual discipline when you are connected and yoked with someone. So if you have it on the front end and you have those boundaries around that discipline, when you join with someone, it enhances your connection. So a couple of things, but um, from a st practical standpoint, I think it's really just as much you can getting it together and then making sure that you are intentional with your pursuit. I think that's important too. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of A Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.